Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of analytical psychology and the works of Carl Gustav Jung. Now, I intend to make several videos on this because it is a really, really, really huge topic. For you to have an idea, um, this series over here, all these grey books, these are Jung's collected works. And this is only a fraction of what he actually wrote. There's still a lot of material that doesn't even fit in here. There's stacks and stacks of letters that he wrote to colleagues and patients and people around the world. And there are also several unpublished manuscripts. So it's a huge world. And in this video, I just want to give you a brief introduction so you kind of get the idea and the gist of what analytical psychology is all about. So the first thing you need to know is that, and this is actually the reason why I love it so much, is that the possibilities in this kind of work and exploration are unlimited. Jung was always very much against concepts like fixed ideas very much against reductive approaches or restrictive approaches so basically all of his philosophy and all of his practical analytical psychology is about asking questions so it's not about answering questions it's about asking questions always opening more doors always being open to different worlds and different possibilities this is especially exciting as an analyst or if you if you start working with, with someone with a Jungian background because they won't come from a position of thinking that they know that they have the answers or that, that they can tell you what to do. No, it's about exploring together because everybody is different. Everybody's psyche is different. Everyone requires different things at different times. So it's really an approach that is very open to all of that and it is a very collaborative kind of work. Now, the second thing that is key in the world of analytical psychology is what Jung called the theory of opposites. This was something that he started realizing or grasping with when he was a very young boy in his first contact with God and the idea of God, Jung was very baffled as a child as to how and why God always seemed to be good and positive and this loving father figure. And through a series of dreams that he had as a, as a child, it actually became clear to him that God has a dark side as well. And this expanded into him realizing or exploring how absolutely everything in our lives has two sides. Nothing in this world is one-sided. So wherever there's good, there's also bad. Wherever there's light, there's also dark. Wherever there is high, there's also low. Wherever there is masculine, there's also feminine. Wherever there is wet, there's dry, and so on, and so on, and so on. And this is particularly important in his work because the work is about achieving wholeness. It's about realizing internally the other side of things that we weren't considering before. So it's about finding this balanced approach, this dialect between the two sides, which usually doesn't exist. And this applies to several different areas of our life and several different areas that you could explore in a work like this. Now, let's talk about the unconscious and how Jung thinks about the unconscious. So, obviously we have consciousness, which is a teeny tiny aspect of what actually is out there. It is everything that we perceive, everything that we see, smell, touch, everything that our senses interact with, everything that we register in our conscious minds, everything that we think about, everything that we think we are. That is actually a tiny, tiny bit of what we actually are. But it's the bit of what we're conscious of, so that's a little bit. Then we have the unconscious, which for Jung actually has several different levels. So first we have the personal unconscious, which is very similar to what Freud, for example, sees the unconscious to be. 
So it's a level where everything that once in our lives was conscious and is not anymore goes. So things that we repress, things that we forget, patterns that are inside us and all that kind of thing. Some different memories, different experiences that we blocked and stored away. All of these are constantly acting on our consciousness. Now, the interesting thing with Jung is that he identified that there is actually an even deeper layer of the unconscious, and that is what he calls the collective unconscious. Now, this is a bit tricky to understand, and actually, as with anything Jung, it's all very tricky to understand unless you have experienced it, so it's really hard to get it across in words, but I'm going to do my best. So what happened when Jung started to work with dreams and unconscious material, both of himself, but also of his clients, his patients, his colleagues? He started to notice that there were a lot of similar themes and similar patterns that were coming up. And what we really need to understand about Jung as well is that the man studied pretty much everything that there is to study and learned about pretty much everything that there is to learn in this world. So he dived deep into comparative religion, into archaeology, into philosophy, into mythology, into different folklore and stories, into all kinds of histories from all over the world. And in all of his, his studies, he found that the, the same themes and patterns that were coming up in his patients' dreams were also present in different stories and different tales and different traditions and actually popped up around the world at different times, completely disconnected from each other. And it's very interesting because even nowadays, if you, if you start observing your own dreams through this approach or if you start seeing a, a therapist or, or a coach in this case who comes from that orientation, you will be able to identify a lot of these themes and patterns that are just intrinsic to human life and human behavior. And all of this is in the collective unconscious. So this is a huge area that basically stores all of history, all of experience of humanity. It includes all the experiences of our ancestors through the end of time. So it is a really, really huge world. And a way that Jung developed to talk about these themes and patterns that reoccur in everyone, uh, he called them archetypes. You might have heard this word as well. So the word archetypes describes these different themes. So we can see, for example, one very common one, one very common archetype is the hero. And if we look at different stories, different myths, different fairy tales, different science fiction movies or shows or books, wherever there's a hero, the journey always has these key moments, these key identifiable patterns and themes that the hero must go through to reach his or her destination or to reach his or her goal. There is a reason why this also makes such great stories because it's something that is relatable. It's something that every one of us will connect to on some level. That's why stories like that draw us in because it's speaking to something in ourselves that is recognizable even if it's not recognizable on a conscious level. So it's something that draws us in which is that most of the time we in ourselves all have the archetype of the hero that is acting in us and driving a lot of our actions as well. This is just one of the examples and there are many. Now the last thing I'm going to mention today is the process of individuation. This is the goal of a Jungian analysis. This is this deep psychological soul journey that we go through, that we're actually constantly going through. The process of individuation is never finished. It's always a work in progress that can go on for lifetimes. What the process of individuation means, it is a journey of us integrating all these aspects that are in our personal unconscious and in our collective unconscious, integrating them into our personality, bringing them to consciousness, becoming a whole person, becoming aware of all of our depths, 
And the beauty of this, what is really, really getting you in touch with, it's getting you in touch with your soul and what your soul wants of you. So this approach is especially useful for people who feel a lack of meaning or a lack of purpose in their lives. Jung actually noticed that in all of his clients who had depressive symptoms and whatnot, what they were lacking was a sense of purpose, a lack of meaning, something to make sense of their existence. And this kind of work is going to put you in touch with exactly that. To illustrate this for you a bit, because it is, I understand that it is difficult to understand, I'm going to use an imagery that Jung used a lot that I find really helps put all of this together. And that is the image of the solar system. As you can see here, we have the solar system with the sun at its center. Now, in, in this metaphor, the sun is our self, our soul, the deepest part of our psyche, the truest, deepest part of ourselves. It can even be described as the reflection of God in us. You can call it God, you can call it whatever you want to call it. And the idea with this metaphor is that just as in the history of humanity, we went from first thinking that everything revolved around the earth to realizing that actually everything revolved around the sun, this is the type of process that the process of individuation leads to. So in this case, the earth represents the ego. So the ego is our consciousness, is everything that we are conscious of, that we are aware of, that we think about, that we think we are, everything that we perceive, everything that we think, etc, etc. Everything that we are conscious of. So for the longest time, and for most of us, our whole lives, we think that that is the center of our universe. That is who we are, that is who defines us, that tiny little spot here, the Earth. What's interesting in this metaphor is that we can already see an example of a parallel between the collective and the individual and we can already see how much one affects the other and how much one is a reflection and a mirror of the other. So in the history of humanity for the longest time we thought that Earth was the center of the solar system and the sun and everything else revolved around it. And it took us centuries to realize and to prove and to convince humanity at large of the fact that actually the sun is the center of the solar system and the earth is just one of the planets that revolves around it. So what this represents in our individual development is that for the longest time we think that our ego is the center of our existence. And through this work, of slowly getting in touch with the collective and conscious, the archetypes and everything that is inside of us and all the depths of our inner world, we come to the realization that actually everything that we are conscious of and everything that we know is not the center of the universe. It is just one tiny aspect of everything else that revolves around our self, our inner sun, our soul. And that is where all of our drives and decisions and ambitions should come from. So that, so the whole process of individuation is about achieving this wholeness and actually becoming as much as possible a true and authentic expression of your soul, which is what connects you to the meaning and the purpose in your life. Now, it's important to say that this kind of work is not for everybody. It is very difficult, it is scary, it is deep, it really goes into all your depths, all those areas that we often do everything we can to avoid. And at the same time, it is exceptionally beautiful, profound, and super, super rewarding. So if this is somehow calling out to you, Stay tuned and I'll be posting a lot more videos on Jung's theories and thoughts.